Today on Nation, we're talking all about targets and goals. Hopefully, you hit everything you needed to before the end of 2020, the worst year ever for things. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, guys? Uh, Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. I forgot my name for a second. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's New Year's. 2020 is over. Uh, by the way, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, uh, this video is halfway okay. Um, if it is, go back and watch. We have tons of content. Three years of content. Hundreds and hundreds of days worth of views we've actually had. Uh, it's super, super awesome. I do appreciate everybody. But if you're one of the cool kids, certified cool kid, what is up? It is you who watches every video, you thumbs up, you give us uh, the support that way, and more importantly, you order your supplies through me, shameless plug, what's up? It is because of you that I get to enjoy my lavish lifestyle here in my office in front of some wood fake paneling, so thank you, thank you, thank you. If you guys want to help me or support me in any way, or just be like, yo, here's a virtual high five, put your orders in with me. My number is 862-312-2026, and of course, we're going into a new year. I hope I'm your rep all year long. There are so many of you who buy all your supplies from me, and I always get to put your orders in, big or small, and it really, really is awesome. It doesn't cost you anything extra, of course, but it means the world to me. It really, really does, so thank you for that. <sighs> well, when you're watching this, the year 2020 will have been over. It is gone. It is done. Hopefully 2021 is going to be halfway decent. Uh, I just want to go off of this a little bit and let you know that so many of you have had amazing years. I want to know down below. All you need to do is go ahead and comment on the video. Tell me, please tell me um, if you guys had a good year. I want to know if you're up, down, I want to know what your numbers are. Uh, hopefully you've calculated them. You don't have to give me exact numbers. Just tell me percentages. Tell me percentages. I know at WCR, we are way up this year. It's been an amazing year. Uh, a lot of you, we had uh, kind of that struggle going on in the March-ish, April. Some of you never even really went back to work full time, uh, which sucks. So I'd love to know. I'd love to hear where you're at. Please do share, comment on the YouTube video if you're listening to this. Which, by the way, thank you to everybody who listens, and I tell you to go comment, and then you go and be like, yo, I was listening on a podcast, but I came here just for this. You guys are putting in effort to leave comments. It's freaking epic. Freaking epic. But uh, tell me. Tell me what you are. For myself uh, in the company, we, uh, I personally am up. Uh, my numbers this year have uh, been really, really well. Um, we actually... I my own company, if you will, uh, we're talking about, uh, 71% growth, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Um, on a year that, uh, has really been tough on a lot of people. So I hope your year is awesome. But that's what we're talking about today is targets, markets, uh, sorry, targets and goals markets. I don't know. Um, and that's a big one. We always talk about goals and we always talk about, uh, planning and systems, and it bores you to death, I know. But let's talk a little bit about the target side of things and goals and setting goals. It's a new year, man or ma'am. It's time for you to set some awesome goals, and how do we stick to them? So first off, let's just say this. I want to know, did you hit your target from last year? Just tell me yes or no. I know I did. I know a lot of people did. And there's been a lot of people who have said this has actually been their best year. They're having an amazing year while COVID's going on. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, big things for me this year that kind of helped that was that, of course, uh, with everything going on, there's been a lot of companies that maybe are new in the area. But there's a lot of companies that are doing explosive growth because the weak ones dropped out. You know that and I know that. And it's unfortunate and never wish uh, bad luck on anybody, but they did. There's some companies that just didn't make it through. They just weren't strong enough, but you are, and that's why you are here. Um, also, going into 2021, of course, you guys know that uh, I bought American Window Cleaner Magazine. 
If you haven't subscribed, go do that because it's absolutely epic. I'm excited for the first issue to come out in January. Uh, but stuff like that was able to be achieved in a year that was really, really tough on a lot of guys. And I know if you're watching this, things your your company didn't close. Even if Pooh hit the fan, you still stuck through it. Like you made it through the year. That's freaking epic. Now, of course, we have this whole winter for a lot of us, uh, which always uh, isn't super fun, but it's time that we can now plan. Plan our targets, plan our goals for next year, and here's the thing I want to tell you. There's a short-term and a long-term goal. It's something you have to do. Now, you can have a five-year goal, and that's a loose goal. That's like, dude, in five years, I want to do a million in gross, million in net, whatever your numbers are. Maybe it's $100,000. Numbers don't matter for anybody else but you. Growth and strength in a company is how you impress yourself. Your gross number, that's how you impress other people, right? So whatever the number is for you as far as growth or cruise or whatever, plan a two-year, plan a five-year. Yes, COVID happened and people got off their goals, but it's not the end of the world. You have to have a short term and a long term. And the only way that you can achieve a goal is to have a large goal or any goal, even a year out, year, a year from now, where are you going to be? The only way to do that is to make a map, right? You have to plan it out. You have to make the big goal, little goals. Okay. If somebody wants to make a million dollars a year, I'm going to grab my calculator because I dropped my phone. You want to make a million dollars a year? I probably should have uh, planned this <laughs> way better, uh, but a million dollars a year is $83,333.33 a month. That's, that's a lot, right? But now knowing that, you can break that down into weeks. A million dollars means $19,231 a week. Now you can break that down. How many days a week do you work? Maybe you work six days. That means every day of those six days, all year long, you need to make $3,205. Now all of a sudden, this million dollars, which I could throw at any number. Man, I'm going to be a billion dollar company, man. You could throw whatever the heck you want. And it doesn't make sense until you break it down into numbers, right? It doesn't make sense. If you ever want to blow your mind on numbers... Look at a large company. Look at Amazon. How much does Amazon make a year? Now break that down into 365. You just blew a hole in your head by looking at numbers. But now you can make it. Like if somebody's like, dude, we did 100 million last year. You're like, wow, that's crazy good, Amazon. They made way more than that. But I'm just throwing numbers out. Then you break it down and say, okay. There's 24 hours in a day, $100 million broken down into 24 hours a day is X amount. And you're like, whoa, whoa, Amazon is doing like $100,000 an hour. Those are dumb numbers that I just pulled out of my rear end. But figure it out. Like that's how you can see and actually grasp. That's how planning and targeting goes. If you put a target from next year, Say you're a company, you want to do $100,000 in gross revenue next year. Absolutely epic high five and you can do it. You know you can do it, right? You have that hustle. But break it down into a day. Break it down into a day into a week, the week into a month, the month into a, a quarter, quarter into a year, year into or half into a year. Now all of a sudden you can see your targets. And here's where it is. The farther the goal, the more you need to hit. The shorter the goal, the less you need to hit. And I'll explain that. Sounds kind of complicated. But when you have a goal, well, going back to that $100,000, say that breaks down into even numbers per week, and you don't hit your weekly goal. What that means is you have 52 other chances to exceed your goal to get back on track. That is why a small goal could be missed, but a big goal can't. If you miss $100,000 next year, definitely not the end of the world. But if you're doing targeting and you're doing market or, um, uh, uh, goals, why do I keep saying marketing? What the heck is wrong? If you're doing that, you want to hit those numbers, right? So having that information makes so much more sense. 
$100,000 means you need to produce $1,924 per week. Now I know, hear me out, same thing in window cleaning uh, sales, right? My May is going to be absolutely destroy January. Like that's going to happen. That's where your law of averages kind of come up for the entire year. But if you track it down, and I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm a big fan of Sheets, uh, Google Sheets. It's a spreadsheet. I know, it's super nerdy, but it's like number porn. If you're into that, by the way, uh, Chris Cartwright just wrote an amazing article on that coming out in the February issue. Stupid plug, but uh, it opens your eyes to this stuff. It's like, if you put that out there and you're tracking all of it, all of a sudden you're up, you're down, you're up, and you can see where your numbers are from where you have to go. Your goal is going to be X amount, that $1,900 per week, right? That looks like this. Your entire year, $1,900 a week, nothing changes from here to here, $100,000, $0, boom. But your goal of where you actually are is going to go like this, and hopefully your number will always stay on top. But that's how you get to where you want to go. If you throw out a goal, like, dude, guess what? 2022, brah, I'm going to make $400,000. And you go, cool, man. How are you going to do that? I'm just going to make $400,000, man. I'm, I'm going to advertise. Oh, man. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do Craig's. Right? If you don't know how you're going to get there, you're not going to get there. It's like saying, dude, I want to go to, I want to go to California. Whoa, what map are you using? You're going to use a GPS? No, a GPS, man. You're using a map? No, no, I'm just, I'm going to go left. Like, you, you just can't do that. You have to have at least some direction. If you just said, I'm going from the East Coast, I'm here in North Carolina, by the way. I'm just going to go west and I'm going to go to Los Angeles. Guess what the likelihood of me getting to Los Angeles is with no maps, no GPS? Maybe a compass that just kind of shows me the direction. Pretty dang hard. Pretty dang hard. I could land anywhere in the, on the West Coast. But if you have an actual map, if you have a GPS, look at a GPS. A GPS can take you from the East Coast to the West Coast, and there's 150 or something, another number I pulled out of my rear, different directions turn left here turn right here turn go straight 64 miles go this way for 300 miles then turn left go right stay bare left a gps tells you every little turn that's how you can get from point a to point b amazingly fast because you know if you if it says turn left of the lights and you go right it says recalculating it recalculates the entire thing back to get to your goal if you don't have a goal and you don't have that target, you didn't write it down, but you didn't break it down into something that you could see, you're not going to get there. Those people, and I tell you, I have people all the time. By the way, if you want to chat or just say what's up or talk, uh, shoot me a text. Shoot me an email. I love to hear stories, man. I live vicariously through you guys. But to get there, people are always like, dude, I'm doing 400000 next year. Like, what'd you do this year? 68. I did, I did, uh, 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 122,000 this year. And you're going to go to, you're going to go to 300,000. Uh, I did 144,000 this year. Next year, I'm going to do a million. Dude, that's super cool. But how, how are you going to get there? Well, I'm just going to like, I'm going to like advertise more. Okay. Did you, did you see how much that needs to do per month? Did you see those numbers? Did you see that? Like, the month of January, you still need to produce like $40,000? Well, no, that month I won't. Well, then that means the next month you're going to have to do 80000 to catch up. Then just to get back on par, February you're going to have to do 80000 Well, yeah, but I, I can't do 80000 in February because it's a short month and it's still cold. Okay, cool. But now you see, $120,000 in the month of March just to go back on track. Is something like that feasible? If it is, that's awesome. But break it down. How much does each crew need to make? How much does each person in the crew need to make? If you can break things down, you can get to where you want to go. And I don't care what your goal is. You could find out if you can get there. So make sure to break those goals down. Make it, spend some time on it, man. When I do when I do goals, uh, I goaling or whatever... When I do goals, it is literally an all-day thing. 
I will spend six to eight hours doing my goals. And you want to know something? I built a spreadsheet for myself. It's not going to work necessarily for you guys, of course, because it's a little bit different, but it's just a yearly broke down report, right? But it puts together everything. And all I have to do is change my goal and it repopulates and calculates everything based on percentages of the year per month, right? So January, you're only doing 13% of your entire yearly. February, you're doing 14%, but then March, you're actually doing 23%, right? It'll break that all down. Building something like that takes time, but here's the thing. When you get that list, all I could do is put in a new number. This is what I wanna do next year, boom, I would be done. But I'm not gonna do that, and you shouldn't either. Now I'm gonna go through and see, okay, so last year, what are my new percentages per month, right? Last year, March, sucked. I remember sitting at my desk, standing because I stand, whatever, doesn't matter. Standing at my desk, like sitting there like, this is dumb. Like every lead I had, every time somebody would talk to me, I'd call them and they're like, you know, there's a pandemic right now. Like, I don't even know if I'm going back to work. Why are you calling me? Then you're burning all these contacts who now they don't want to do anything with you. You know, you're not actually helping anybody. You're just like upsetting. Like, I was standing there like, I should just literally take a month off and I would be so much better off because my leads would still be strong. I wouldn't be upsetting people. I wouldn't be making any less money than I already am. Like, that's going to be March, but that number is going to calculate back into my total. So now next year when March and April hit, which sucked, they're going to equal out where my June was amazing. June's normally not as amazing, right? So going back through there and being as detailed as possible, now every single morning when I come in, I go through, pull my numbers for that last day, put it all together into the spreadsheet and keep that running total. So my spreadsheet, to nerd out again, is broken down into weeks. Uh, So I got 52 columns technically. The date is in every single one of them, which I have to go through and change every year because of course that changes, right? But... I go through and do that every single year, and then every single day, I completely update that, right? So if the first one's 100, the next one is 120, the next one is 180, right? Every day, I input my new numbers to get to my goal. And then when that week is done, I go to the next category, and it stays that way. That's how I track. So that means every single day, I can go onto my computer and see exactly where I am. I have that all built into a... um, a bar graph, no, bar graph, line graph, whatever, some dumb graph, right? But I can see instantly the number's green. The line is green. I'm above my goal. I'm there. That's where I should be. That's where I am. I'm above it. I can look through in my numbers and see, hey, guess what? I'm X amount over my goal. Oh, guess what? I'm X amount under my goal. That was a sucky week. I got to kick butt next week. That week comes, say, I do really good, get myself back above the goal. Awesome. Well, guess what? I got momentum. I can push this week and get another boost. And now all of a sudden I'm even farther ahead so that when my vacation comes, like I take vacation. I did take a vacation this year. I just realized I was gone for a week. That week I didn't do, (laughs) I didn't do much sales, right? So with that being said, the big thing is, is that having those goals, building that target and getting there is going to help you out. That's why we have goals. Goals allow us to see where we want to be and calculate how to get there. It's our GPS, you have to have it. People say, well, what if I have to change a goal? What if COVID hits and my goals are screwed up? Well, guess what? You cannot achieve a goal. Like if your goal this year was to do 100% growth, you calculated it all out, but you only did 80%, guess what? That sucks, you didn't hit your goal, but lots of other things came into play, right? It's not the fact that you hit your goal or didn't hit your goal. It's that you saw how to get to your goal. It's so, You saw how to get to your target. So the big thing is, is that I don't change goals myself because I don't want to make it so I achieve it. I want to make it so I blow it out of the water. I want to make it so that it's something for me to strive for. Like, man, January, first week of January, I look at my goals and I'm like, dude, this is going to be a sucky sucky year man i gotta work so hard and a lot of you know i'm not touting my own horn but i do work a ton i work very hard to do kind of what we do so much content so much media so much talking to people and and all that 
So you see where you have to go and it looks unattainable and still think, until things start happening. All of a sudden, second week of January is an epic week for you, man. You busted your hump. You all of a sudden doubled your goal for the week. It doesn't mean week three you don't do anything. It means you work just as hard week three and now you're ahead. That's how you can overachieve your goals. But here's the thing. When it comes down to the last week of the year, which, by the way, when I'm recording this, is the last week of the year, and you look at your numbers and go, boom, books are closed. What'd you do? Dude, I blew my goal out of the water. Maybe you just beat your goal. Maybe you didn't get to your goal. That number then allows you to work off it for your next one. Don't pull a number out of your rear end. Calculate what you're going to do. How are you going to get there? That's where we talked about marketing uh, schedule. I'm not going to get into that again, but uh, watch any of the other videos on the marketing side of things. But to market is to get to your goal. A lot of it is like, you can't just sit back and be like, dude, I'm going to get more referrals. How? Well, I'm just, I'm going to be nicer. No, what? Now there's a system in place. Every single customer I ask, every single customer gets the form. There's a a QR code and I do a follow-up call. My office manager calls them the next day and sees if they gave me a review. If they can give me a referral, maybe I'm going to collect names at the job. Hey, do you know anybody who might also want our services? We're going to give you guys all a deal just because you're friends, right? Maybe you are starting to hire nice job, right? Sorry, I don't have a link to nice job, uh, but maybe nice job itself. Uh, they're the ones collecting your reviews. There's companies out there that have been in business for three years with 500 reviews. Guess who's getting hired? They're getting hired in an expended uh, uh a bigger, faster pace than anybody else because of the reviews. Maybe that's how you're going to get there, but you have to figure out how you're getting there. You have to see the, 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 the GPS. You have to figure out a long term so you can break it down. Now, with that being said, guess what? I hate a five-year goal. I hate it so much because a five-year goal, you can take a five-year goal, break that down into five individual years and know where your acceleration is and where your growth is and break it all down and blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. That goal is going to take you so much longer to do a five a five year, because that five year I'm going to say okay, I did a hundred thousand dollars this year in my window cleaning business. Next year I'm going to be able to do probably I'll say I'm going to really really kick it up and I'm going to do seventy five percent growth, and then I'm going to do you know sixty percent growth on top of that, then fifty percent growth. I'm going to work it from one to build to the five so that I can see where my progression is. Instead of people going, well, five years from now, I'm going to be a million dollar company. How are you going to get there? (laughs) Hard work and dedication, man. Fist pump. You have to plan it. I'm sorry I'm so spunky on this one, by the way. I don't know why. (coughs) I'm scratching my voice. But it's, it's just super passionate because we're at the right time. Now's the time to do it. I'm telling you, when you see those companies out there that do what you want to do, when you see those guys that you're like, holy cow. Dude is killing it for the most part. Yeah, there's luck. Dude, there's so much luck in business. I'm telling you, my luck, my biggest account, when I was when I owned my window cleaning business, again, I'm jumping off real quick, my largest account was like $90,000 a year was an account that I got on accident by driving down the interstate and calling the place. And they're like, yeah, come do a demo. Uh, okay, right? Luck is there. My largest particular property at the time, before this, this is years before, was I just happened to like, be like, oh, you know who I should call? I saw, uh, call them up. Hey, uh, I'm looking to do some subcontracting for your cleaning company. And they're like, oh my gosh, we were literally just talking. I stopped a conversation about how our last window cleaners stunk like cigarettes and answered your phone. It must be fate. Luck always comes into play, but here's the thing. You can plan for progression. You can plan for growth. Luck just helps you. It's the same thing where there is luck, there is unluck. There is COVID. There is all this other crap that could happen. Guess what? If you're a one-man show and you get sick or you knock on wood, have uh, you know, where you where you land on the ground and and hurt yourself, you're out of work. Like that is unluck. You have to take the luck with the unluck. But that's where goals are. That's where this target thing is. If you could target for that, you could see, okay, well, guess what? And I'm, I'm going to give you an example. In my own terms, I was gone a week, and uh, one week I was sick uh, before. 
And I write that down like in my log on that spreadsheet. I write it down so that when I'm doing my review, I can look through and be like, what happened that week? How did I make like $300 in the entire week? Oh, that was the week that I fill in the blank. Oh, that was where I went this place and then that happened. I was super sick, dude. I, could, I couldn't even see for two days, right? I had COVID and was literally unconscious for like 36 hours. Like I did stuff apparently, but like that writes down, right? That's unluck. So take that luck. Don't ride your luck and be like, oh yeah, man, I'm doing so. Cause bad things are going to happen. That's why business owners are who we are. That's why my hair is, is thinning as it is. It's because as business owners, we go through a lot of crap, but you got to have the roadmap. And the only way the roadmap happens when you type something into the GPS, guess what? You put the end destination and it tells you how to get there. You have to put a goal in to be able to figure out how to get to that goal. It has to go that way. What happens when we don't hit our goals? Nothing. I wish I could I wish I could tell you, oh well, that means you're a fit. No. <clears throat> it doesn't. Guess what? Sometimes we don't hit our goals. We can calculate and we can work extra hard. Guess what? Q4 comes, quarter four comes. You're like, dude, I am falling behind, man. I'm like 10 grand under my goal. Q4, it's up to you to bust your hump. Pull the hustle out. You were sitting on a boat with a Mai Tai, man. You had the hustle. It just happened to be on vacation, right? Pull it out. It's your job to then see where you are. And that's why we track every day to see if you need to work even harder. Or if you're not even going to hit your goal. And if you don't hit your goal, nothing bad happens. But making a goal something you strive for is awesome. Making a goal something that you may hit with hard work is awesome. Making a goal that is like a dollar and a half higher than your goal last year. I mean, if you're on a like, you know, sit back and relax year, which I've been, I took two or three years in my own window cleaning company when just stuff sucked. I was just like, I don't want to do nothing. My goals, eh, I'm not even, yeah. Right? If that's where you are, that's the right thing. It's okay. But if you want to get yourself out of that slump, your goal is what gets you out of that slump. If you don't hit your goal, fine. Because guess what? The second year, you're going to build off that goal. Guess what? If you want to hit $500,000 gross in five years, you got your whole plan down to the week how to get there with calculated inflated goals. Remember, uh, year one and year two, you may do uh, 50% growth. But guess what? Year two and year three, you're not going to do 50% growth on the 50% you already had plus that. It's going to go down. It's these big companies, man. If I'm doing a million dollars a year and I could do 10% growth, that's $100,000 in new work. That's absolutely amazing. That's more than some people even get in their business. That was only 10% of my goal, right? So keep that in mind. But when you build those goals and you get down and now all of a sudden you only did 80% in year one when you should have done 100% of that goal, well, guess what? Year two has to be done harder. You have to push then to get back on track. But you know where you are because of the tracking. Remember, the smaller and farther the goal, the more it's okay to miss it. You miss year one, fine. Year two, you're going to work harder to get there. You're going to do more advertising. Your marketing calendar is going to look good. Maybe you're even going to spend a little bit more on there. You don't hit in year two. God, man, sucky. Compounds. Year three, I got to work even harder. If you're missing year three, you're getting closer to that. You're losing your time to change it. That's bad. If you miss by year four, you only have one year to hit that five-year goal. Right? But if you missed a week Seven in the first year? Okay. Work harder next year. This is up to you guys. This is how you can do marketing. This is if you're looking for growth. If you're looking to be stronger or better as a company, you have to plan it. Plan it. Short and long-term goals. A long-term goal creates short-term goals. Short-term goals are obtainable. A short-term goal is the turn left at the lights. A long-term goal is you've arrived at your destination. It's up to you to plan kind of how it goes, but now's the time. I hope you guys all have an absolutely epic year. I'm sorry for being so hot under the cuff. I don't know. I was running errands today. I don't. I didn't even have my caffeine. I don't know. 
Anyway, but there it is. By the way, if you want me to give you a virtual high five of awesomeness and you want to put your order in through me, that's how I make my cheddar. So do absolutely do that. 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. Call me, text me. I get people 10 times a day. Somebody is just shooting me a text like, yo, Jersey, everything is in my cart, man. All I do is awesome. I'll run it now. Are you still at one, two, three? Your total is $100 with tax and free shipping. That's what it looks like when you order with me. You're like, yeah, all that's good, man. I run it. You get email confirmation, comes right to you. You know everything's placed. You can double check everything. And now I get credit for it. It didn't cost you one penny more. It actually was easier for you to do that. And I got to get what I get. My, my, my... My credit for that is how I live and exist. So thank you, guys. I hope you got something out of this uh, episode. If you haven't yet, sign up. Subscribe to the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Uh, Go to awcmag.com and subscribe uh, because that's what we do. We're epic. We learn. Now, all of a sudden, you get a monthly magazine with not only custom stickers because the sticker board is going to go and blow up. But you're also going to get some amazing articles from amazing contributors. It's just another way to give back and help you learn more and be more awesomer. Which, yes, awesomer is a word. But anyway, again, thank you guys so much. Hopefully your year is awesome. Hopefully you had a safe New Year's. In general, uh, go out there. Plan everything you can. Get your goal. Target. More importantly, be epic.